This video is an introduction to else if and else statements in R. Where we left off last time, uh, we'd learned about if statements and how we could only execute a block of code if a certain condition was measured. And we were looking at this in the context of an example where we had different equations for calculating the mass or biomass of a plant based on measurements of its volume. With if statements, all we'd been able to do so far is calculate the mass if the vegetation type was equal to tree. But what if we want to do different calculations for different vegetation types? We could do this by combining multiple if statements, but the right way to do it is to use else if. And else if statements let us add additional conditional checks to this same if statement. To add another condition to check, we start by going to the closing curly brace for that block of if code, and we'll add a space, and then we type else if. To add an else if statement, I go down to the closing curly bracket from the if statement. I'll add a space, and then the word else, space, and then the word if. And then we'll start another set of parentheses, and this is where we'll add the new condition that we want to evaluate. And so let's say we've got an equation for grasses. We'll say veg type is equal to grass. And then we start another set of curly brackets. And now here we put the code that we want to execute if the vegetation type is equal to grass. And so let's say that equation is mass is equal to 0 0.65 times volume raised to the 1.2. Now if we execute this code with veg type as tree, we'll see that we get out the same answer that we had before because we've got the same volume and the same veg type. And that's because the way this code executes is we set the veg type to tree, we set the volume to 16, this line checks to see if the vegetation type is equal to tree. It is, and so then it executes this line of code. And then, because it's executed this block, it stops and jumps all the way to the end, and we've got 32.27. If we change this to grass and run the same code again, we'll see that we get a different answer out. And that's because the code executes like this. We set vegetation type to grass. We set volume equal to the same number as before. The code then checks to see if veg type is equal to tree. It's not, and so it skips this chunk of code right here. It sees there's an else if statement, and so it then checks this condition. And it sees that veg type is equal to grass. So then it executes this block of code and calculates mass with this equation, which gives us back 18.2. So more generally, if else if statements check the first condition, if it's true, they run that condition's code and skip the rest. And if it's not true, then it checks the next condition available and runs that if it's true. If not, it skips on to the next one, and so on until it runs out of conditions. If none of our conditions is satisfied, we can tell the code what to do in that circumstance. And we do that using just an else statement. And so we can have multiple else if clauses. We'll stop at one for now. But then once we're done with all of these possible conditions, we can say else on its own and then a curly bracket. 
And the code that goes into this code block will only execute if none of the conditions is satisfied. So let's say that we don't want to calculate a mass if we don't have an equation for that vegetation type. In this else block, we could set mass is equal to null. That will guarantee that we have this mass value, that some mass is created, but that it's null because we didn't know how to calculate it. And so if we run this code with the same inputs as before, we'll get the same answer. But if I changed this to shrub, and we don't have a condition that would match for shrub, then we'll get Na out as our mass. And that's because the code checks the first condition. Veg type is not equal to tree, so that's false. We skip that chunk of code. It checks the second condition. Veg type is not equal to grass, so this is false. So it skips this chunk of code. And then it's run out of conditions. <clears throat> None of the conditions it's checked have been true, and therefore it runs this final line. But this only gets run if none of these conditions are true, which is why uh, when we have this set to grass, we still got an answer out. So that's the basic idea behind else if and else statements. Else if statements let us add additional conditions and associated blocks of code to be run if those conditions are true. Only one of those chunks of code will get run, and it's the first one where the condition is true. And then that whole block of if, else if, and else statements will jump to the end of that uh, block. And we can also catch the case where none of the conditions is true and have a block of code to run in those cases, and we do that using an else statement. To do this, at the end of our first if statement that we've already written here, we put a space after the closing curly bracket, and then the cloud gets us. Come on, cloud. Why? Why, cloud? Why? 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 So now we can run this code with vegetation type equal to tree. And we'll see that I've got a typo somewhere. And now, oh, and now we'll run this code with veg type is equal to tree. And when I run it, I'll get an error. And the first error up top here said unexpected equals in else if veg type ah so i've made uh, a common mistake which is remember that we want two equal signs to indicate equality in our conditions yeah do i really want that i'm not sure 